In this G7 Long Range Ballistic Calculator instructional segment, we're going to cover some of the advanced inputs. Spin drift, Coriolis, target lead, and most importantly, the trajectory validation feature. Okay, for this segment, uh, with the advanced inputs, we're going to take a look at our spin drift, Coriolis, target lead, and then our trajectory validation. So in the spin drift section, we'll go over those inputs. Basically, we're going to calculate an approximate spin drift. Uh, this isn't the actual six degree of freedom measurement, but it's a very close approximation that, that works out pretty well. Uh, for the Berger 168 grain VLD, we're going to take a bullet length of 1.44, diameter of 284. Now our rate of twist in my gun is a 1 in 9, so I'm going to put 9, and the twist direction is right hand. So a couple output options here. One, we can show the spin drift on the drop chart. It adds a column on the drop chart. Uh, we can also add the spin drift to our wind deflection. Now, personally, I like to see it in a separate column so that I can do my own math and see what the effect is. So we're going to add it to the program with spin drift on the drop chart. Now, spin drift is a unique uh, phenomenon where uh, the, the gyroscopic nature of the bullet causes it to drift right or left, uh, depending on your rate of twist. For more articles or videos uh, on how spin drift works, visit g7.com. Now for the Coriolis parameter, we're going to look at something that, that I find uh, very intriguing. Uh, essentially, the way the spin of the earth affects your bullet impacts. Now this, this isn't a big deal at, say, 500 yards, but when you hit 1,000 yards, it's something that uh, we need to examine and look at and, and measure the magnitude of at least. Uh, it is based on the latitude of your location on the earth. So Northern Hemisphere, Middle of America, we're running about 45 you know, 44.45 here will work. Uh, it's also based on the compass heading. So north, south, east, west. And the, the, the big effect is east and west. So if you're pointing north and south, it's, it's negligible. So let's go ahead and set this at a, in a westerly direction. And I'm going to save that. Okay, so we're running 272 degrees, and we can include it in the drop calculation or not include it. Uh, I like to include it and at least see what the effect is so that I can be aware of that, that setting. And then finally, our last segment here is the target lead. And uh, while we don't recommend ever shooting at an animal while it's moving, if there's ever a situation where you need to make a follow-up shot or for recreational shooting, uh, setting the target uh, speed and direction and uh, examining the magnitude of that uh, calculation is, is pretty interesting. It can have a huge effect on the amount you'd have to lead an animal at long range. Now, the final section that we have here is our trajectory validation. And in my opinion, this is one of the most powerful features that the G7 long range ballistic calculator offers. Uh, this uh, trajectory validation allows us to fit the field results to our calculations so that when we build a drop chart it will give us the precise solution that it takes to compensate for our drop and our wind deflection. Now it's going to pull all these variables in from our input screen. Our BC, weight, velocity, our sighting data and our environmental data. Uh, what we're going to measure at the range uh, the key piece of information is the drop at a far target. Now, while we're out there, we want to verify that our zero uh, is also measured and that our environmental data is measured. Uh, if you shoot in different conditions, we need to measure that and put it in here. So let's put in a, a scenario that we just experienced. We, we saw, shot our gun at 200 yards, and we were uh, a half inch high to our group center. We, we're shooting pretty tight so we can measure a half inch. Uh, click value is quarter minute, zero degrees incline. Now the altitude was actually 4,500 feet at our range and the temperature was a little cooler than we expected. It, uh, it was overcast today so it was 65 degrees and we'll leave the humidity set at 50%. So the target that we have set up is at 965 yards. 
and we used the drop chart that we calculated to adjust and it told us to dial like 78, 79 clicks and we dialed that in but we shot just a little bit low so we adjusted a couple more clicks and we ended up dialing in 81 clicks. Now 81 clicks put us right on the target and you know I had a couple above the bullseye and a couple right below the bullseye so I felt like my elevation was just right. Now if you're if you shoot a nice group down there and the group center is high, let's say the group center is five inches high, then you'll come back here in this zero adjust and you'll put five inches for five inches high. Same thing if it's low. But uh, I felt like 81 clicks was right on so we're going to use that information. So what I've done is I've adjusted the zero that I shot and I've also uh, indicated the other drop point which was at 965 yards at 81 clicks. Now those two points are going to help us set this curve to be proper. Uh, the altitude and temperature are also important to put the actual measured conditions from your shooting situation. So we're going to adjust the velocity so that it fits our downrange drop data. So if I calculate my trajectory, my true velocity, it's going to show me that the uh, 168 grain bullet was actually running 2978 to get this trajectory. So I'm pretty sure that that's a good value. It's not off the chart. Uh, maybe if it changed it two or 300 feet per second, I might be a little nervous. But I like that one, so I'm going to add it to the program. So now I've got a bullet BC of 617 and a muzzle velocity of 2978, which is a validated muzzle velocity. And when we go to our output section, we'll be able to verify that those click values were just right. So I want to save this before I move on. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to save this load. And we're going to save it as the 7mm Remington Magnum. And that will be available for me when we move to our output section. Now that we've covered the spin drift, Coriolis, target lead and trajectory validation sections, be sure to view the remainder of the Long Range Ballistic Calculator instructional videos available at g7.com.